All right, let's go over the indicator first. So the indicator, when you load the indicator, okay, we'll spend time today going over the indicator, then we can understand how the strategy is going to work. So when you load the indicator, you're going to have uh, these parameters, and you're going to have what's called this HTF means higher time frame. So what you can do is if you check mark this, then it's going to reference a higher time frame and only look for setups in direction of that time frame. So if you click this box and it set, you can do anything you want. Um, I got it on a Simrenko, 9 Simrenko here. But you can put anything that you want in here. You can use tick charts, you can use minute charts, whatever you want. But if you click that, what it's going to reference, it's going to reference these moving averages. And here is the big question I got over the last couple of weeks since we've been back from vacation. Is that what if I only want to use two moving averages for trend? You can do that. Just input the same moving average over top on three of the or four of the five, make it the same number, and then use the one for your smaller average. How it's how it works is this is your shortest MA. All these have to be uh, below each other in a downtrend, and all of them have to be above each other in an uptrend. So whatever inputs you put down, if you put an 8, 20, 50, 150, uh, 550, what I have standard in there, this is our longest MA that I have as a default input. What that means is, is the 150, if in a downtrend, has to be below the 550 to take a sell setup. The 50 has to be below the 150, the 20 has got to be below the 50, the 8 has got to be below the 20. If the 8 is above the 20, you're not going to get any setups, period. Okay, so if you have this clicked and you're wondering why this is not taking trades, it's because of this. It has nothing to do with anything about speed in the market, anything to do about um, volume spikes or anything like that, referencing our speed candles. It automatically will not take any trades at all. So you have to understand when you check this, it's going to narrow down only trades in reference to these averages. Now, you don't have to use 5 MAs. 5 MAs are great when the market's gone vertical because it catches you in a position of weakness or strength in the market. For example, if I have this checked and I apply it, I apply it and I look into, let's just look at the ES a day coming into the last half of the day. You can see that it started a trend right here at uh, 14.25. So about uh, almost 2.30 Eastern Standard Time, you turn red, your ATR turned red, that's indicating sell setups. What we're looking for is we're looking for opposite color speed bars, meaning green speed bars against trend to catch the rolling position traders. So if you're trying to position yourself short, you would look for setups here, and I'll show you filters how to get in at these levels uh, to reduce risk and also increase accuracy. So that's what we're trying to do. This is the WPT trade, rolling position trader trade. So if you were trading the markets into the close, I know a lot of you like to do that. Um, come back in the afternoon around 1.30, the S&P starts heating up about 1.30, sometimes 1.15. Um, and then it really likes to heat up from 1, around 1.30 all the way to um, into the close in this type of environment. So when you do this, then if 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 you click, if you click that, if I go back and look at today's trading, you don't have a lot of setups because it's only looking for vertical movement in the market. Here's a WPT trade. That's a filter trade that worked out. Now this is a five sim ranker. You think, well, that's a small move. It's not a small move. Your fills at the high of that bar, 2750. It got as high as 34 and three quarters. That's a nice little move on the S&P. So here's another filter trade. So you know, when you do the filter trade, you're not going to get a lot of, you can see, there's not a lot of setup. It's only, here's another WPT that worked this morning at 10 o'clock, caught that low. I'll show you a filter how to get in that. That's a fill at the high of the bar, 30 and three quarters. Got as high as 39 and three quarters. That's a nice, almost nine point S&P trade potential, uh, potential. So when you do that filter, just be aware of that. You know, here's another WPT, 7.30 this morning. I'll show you how to filter that trade in. It did not get filled to the low of this bar with my filter I use. Um, so that, again, that potential is a huge move, potential right there and there. So when you use these, 
when you put the higher time frame on, in other words, right, when you put this higher HTF on, you're not anticipating a lot of setups. Now, the neat thing about this algo, which a lot of you, that's why we're having these conference calls, it's a very in-depth, complex piece of uh, work uh, that we have going on here with the software. So if you just input a couple things the wrong way, you're going to get totally different results. So we're going to take this step by step, like I said, every Thursday at 5 o'clock. We'll have these recorded. We won't make them long. I told Gerald today we're going to go with indicator first because you can apply this. Once you understand the indicator, your strategy, if you don't know how to do the indicator, your strategy is going to be all screwed up. So once you understand the indicator, the strategy is very easy in my, my mind. So, you know, understand what I'm telling you here, and you can apply it towards the strategy. So um, if you look at the, um, if you uncheck the higher time frame, and then I uncheck it and I apply it, now what you're going to get, you're still going to get the trend trades. You, you, you call all these moves, but over the course of the day, you can see you can have multiple, you're going to have multiple entries right across the board. So, you know, you're going to get the downtrend and the uptrend both ways. So it's going to take the counter and it's going to take the trend setups. So if that is unchecked, you're telling yourself you're taking counter trend trades and you're taking trend setups on SnapX. Okay, so that's the first thing. Now what I want to show you tonight, which a lot of you don't understand this, and that's why we're going to break this down from indicator to strategy, instead of going from strategy to indicator, because I feel if you understand how to adjust a strat indicator to fit your trading style, you plug and play in the strategy and it should be pretty close to what you want. So what you need to, this is a five Simranko, this is a longer, this is longer than I show in the room. So I'm showing you a five Simranko, five Simranko bar, this is a longer time frame on the S&P to slow it down for you, so it can slow trades down for you. So if you, tra if you trade, you can trade any time frame really with this, and you can even swing trade this with longer time frames, but if you trade a five Simranko, you have to adjust your numbers on your speed bars. You have to adjust it. If you do not adjust it, you will not get a smooth ATR. So I show a 3 sim in the room. You can even smooth the 3 sim out more by adjusting your ATR length. Okay? So if you just want, if you don't want a lot of setups, what I educate traders to do is look at a higher time frame. You know, you can put this on the NASDAQ. It slows the NASDAQ down. If you put a 3 sim on the NASDAQ, it's crazy. It goes nuts through the through the uh, entire day. But if you put a 7 sim or an 8 sim on NASDAQ, it slows action down quite a bit. And you can start looking for these WPT trades and so on. So you can adjust your time frame according to your trading style. But I wanted to show you an intermediate time frame because if I just show you a shorter time frame, the action is too fast for, for some of you guys and gals to pick up. And it's not conducive to what we want to try to do. So now the strategy, it will not shut down. If you notice one thing, the strategy does not shut down at all in fast markets and slow markets. It keeps running uh, no matter what the speed is. So what you want to do is you want to try to find a time frame that fits your trading style. So what I like to show you tonight is I want to show you using the higher time frame reduces trades. All right. I don't use the higher time frame a lot filter because I like more setups, but that's your own trading style. If you use a 5 sim Renko, you'll notice my speed period. So we understand, do we understand the higher time frame before I move on? Just give me a why. Everybody understand that? Everybody understand that you, it, it'll be counter if you uncheck, just give me a why. If you uncheck it, it's going to look for counter trend trades. And if you haven't checked, it's look, going to look for trend trades, right? So we, and you, it's every one is on top of each other. So the eight's got to be above the 20, 20 above the 50, 150 above the 550. Okay. That's what's going to happen. You're not going to get a lot of setups until the market goes vertical. But that's a good thing. The reason I put this in is not a bad thing only getting involved in vertical markets. So you don't have to use my MAs I use here. You can customize it if you're a shorter term trader, a scout trader. You can go to a smaller time frame, a smaller tick chart, a smaller Renko chart. And you can put these moving averages even smaller because you don't want these large moving averages on a smaller time frame. And then you could pretty much scalp the market if you want to do that also. So this you can put any way you want. Just remember, if you check it, this number, I mean, this MA is, has to be below this 
this below this, this below this. So, like I said, if you just want an 820 and that's it, then just put 20 here. You know what I'm saying? You don't have to use all five. Five just gives you a bigger filter. Then I'll look for an 820. Eight's got to be a below all these 20s. So you can put anything that you want in there as far as numbers that you want to use and so on. So I'll uncheck that. So let's go to the next thing. If you use a five sim Renko, okay, and instead of a three, you have to change your speed period. What a speed period does is speed period are these, let's get this back up real quick. Speed period, I'll blow this up, are simply these green boxes and red boxes. It's telling us that we got speed in the market and we got some volume spikes coming in the market. Typically, if you have any type of volume indicator and you look at the volume that's coming in, it's spiking at these levels. And typically, the volume will spike really high. You'll have big volume spikes at the top of these, uh, top of the ATR, where you'll see the volume just really spike high and they catch the wrong position traders. So I have a filter to get us in on a um, on a high probability trade at these volume spikes. And so what we'll do is a, the, you have to adjust your speed speed according to your trading style. I can get more of these bars if I want because what it does, if I increase my speed candles, if I increase my speed candles, increase, where's it at here? If I increase my speed period, okay, I'm going to get less uh, less um, speed candles, uh, less WPTs. If if I reduce my speed period, I'm going to get more WPT trades. Why is that important? Is that if you if, if if on a smaller time frame, if you want to get more, if you have let's say you trade a three sim and you want to get more WPTs, you can go all the way down to a six period and get shallow re, more shallow retracements on speed. But if you use a 5 sim Renko, if I use my standard setting off a 5 sim Renko on a 3 sim, this is what you get when you first get the program. If you get it and you put in, let's say that I put in 8, or I even put in 6, you get a lot of WPTs that way. Now you see how difficult that is to read. So you have to understand this because the algo will look, pick this up also, and they and the algo will start taking trades in here and here in between these retracements. So if you just leave that as a standard setting and you're trying to trade a five sim Renko, your algo is not going to show good results. So what you need to do is you need to on a five if you go if you go up in Renko size, you have to increase your speed period. Okay, you have to. You have to increase the speed period, okay, if you go up in Renko size. So here's a 10, and I uh, I educate you guys to do 10 on a 5 sim if you want to mark this down. 10 works really well on right, pretty much right across the board on all these markets that I look at. So 10 period the 5 sim, but if you use a, even an 8 that we use on a 3 sim Renko, you know, it just, it's it, the algo will take trades in between these swings and that's not conducive to a great trading plan so if you use a, a if you're using a longer time frame adjust your speed period so my point is is without even looking at the strategy i can i can pretty much match up what's going to pretty much look pretty good and what is going to catch these possible potential highs and lows just by playing with my indicator i know if i go low if I even go low to a five speed period, I mean, look at all those retracements. We got tons and tons of retracements that are happening. However, if I go, if, if you are a retracement trader, which I'll get into, then uh, on the next session, then I'll show you how it's very conducive. If you're scalping the market, it catches these really nice swings. But if you're strictly trading a WPT, an offset color speed bar against trend, I mean, with the overall trend, I'm sorry, an offset color speed bar with trend, then then you got to increase this to 10. So if I'm a five sim Renko trader, I would put 10 in for your speed period. So the higher time frame you go, increase speed period. It's going to catch on a longer time frame. It's going to be more clear to you, and you're going to be able to see these trades a lot better. 
and your algo is just not going to take setup after setup by using a standard three on here. Okay. So are, are, are we clear? Is there everybody clear on that? If we increase the speed period, if we increase our time frame, we got to increase the speed period. Is everybody understand that? Just give me why if you understand that. Everybody good? Everybody on the same page? If you use a lower time frame like a four or a three, you can't use a 10. Because if I put this, if I put a three with a 10 speed period, it's the same way. It screws every, everything up again. All right. So use, use, um, no matter what time frame your URL you use, no matter if it's a 9 sim, uh, with 5 sim, you just got to increase your period until you find out what matches well for you on your setup on the ATR that you use. That's the best, best way to do it. Match it up. Yep. And then match it up on the indicator. So then with, so that's the speed period. Now, if I put speed candles in, what speed candles means is this, is it, it's got to, it's got to close a certain amount of candles in one direction. All right. For it to have speed in the market. And if it doesn't, if it, if it's not moving in that direction by a certain amount of candles, it's not going to show any speed. If you just use one, one candle, you're not going to get a lot of setups, but it, it filters your trades. I leave this standard at three or four three or four on the indicator and a strategy on pretty much all my time frames. So you can play with it uh, how you want. It will affect your speed bars, but it's just telling you how much, how many candles is required minimum to show speed in the market. All right. So let's go first of all to uh, the DS period uh, is a stochastic. We, we don't need to worry about that because I'm going to go over a WPT trade for you real quick. Um, you don't worry about this as much uh, unless you're looking at retracement trades. But if you're looking for strictly WPTs, and I think we all know by now, WPTs, uh, which are the wrongly position trader trades, these are, like I said, these are opposite color candles. Here, let me get this. Here, opposite color candles that come in against the overall trend. So if the trend is down, we have red ATR, I mean trend down, then what we want to do is we want to see an opposite color candle. So we want to see opposite color speed bars right here. Once you see the first, every time I see a green speed bar coming into an ATR, I'm ready for a setup. Every time I see a green speed bar coming into ATR, I'm ready for a setup. It gives you a heads up. The first green bar that comes in, and I'll show you how to filter these trades out, I'm ready for a setup. So what we're trying to do is we're trying to not look. These are used for retracement trades, which we'll go over in the next video. I'll show you on the next retracement trades, these little arrows. These are not WPT trades. These are more retracement with momentum. All right. The WPTs are the lowest risk you're going to get on this software that, that we released to you. This is going to be your lowest risk, highest reward trade. Because what you're doing is you're trying to catch the, the, the pivot high or pivot low to the exact bar on a pivot high, pivot low on a trend, on a retracement. So we're trying to get exhaustion because we got speed coming in. Everybody knows when there's a lot of volume coming in the market, a volume spike. Volume spikes are typically swing lows or swing highs in the market. That's what these speed bars are predicated on. They're predicated on volume spikes. So we can increase these numbers if we want by lowering the speed period we can decrease these by increasing the period however if you increase your size of your Rinko bar or any time frame you'll want to use a higher speed bar okay so let's go over filters first of all let's, let's go to the filter bit so let's go over again hold on let me get back in the indicator so we'll go over the uh, retracements uh, I just hand it, have a standard uh, stochastic of 20 in there, overbought, oversold. I like to use that on the 5 sim Renko because I don't pay attention to the uh, these arrows as much as I do the WPTs. Those are what I look at. But this is very, very important, and I cannot stress this enough. If you increase to a larger Renko bar, the two most important things that you have to change, 
or you're not going to get good results on the strategy or the indicator. In fact, if you just leave this indicator set to here, you're going to see a lot of a lot of setups. If you just use these standard setups, standard settings, a 10, a 4, a 20, 80, 20, I increase my ATR length higher on higher time frames. And so the ATR length I use on a 5 sim. You can use between a 32 to 36. 33 is fine for me. It catches these swings pretty good. You don't, it's not an exact science. You don't have to have the, exact, have the exact number. You can find out which one you like the best, but you can use 33 like um, I like. Um, it's a nice little number on a 5 sim to find a lot of these setups that pop up. But you must increase your ATR size, and you must increase your speed period. If you do not increase these two things, you will not get setups, and you will get inaccurate setups, and your algo will show inaccurate setups also. Because what we're trying to do is we're trying to see whatever time frame we get, we're trying to see what ATRs with speed, with speed can contain price on a retracement. Can it stop price on a retracement? And if you use, if I change this, and I go down to, let's say, a 25 ATR, which is good, a 23 or 25 ATR on a 3 sim. If you change that, what's going to happen is it's going to screw up all your 5 sim setups. So now, your 5 sim is going to look like this. Just by changing your ATR to a higher number, and this, let's say you have it standard on 8 over here also. So let's say you... Let's say you take your 3 sim and go right to the 5 sim and change it. And this is what we a lot of traders use is the 8. This is what you're going to see. All right? You're going to see this. Is it are you catching any WPTs? You're not going to catch that one. You're not going to catch that one. It's t I mean you're not going to catch this one. It just started. My point is is some traders what they're doing, they're thinking that the a smaller time frame is run is exactly the same exact input you use for larger time frames. Absolutely not. If you're using a larger time frame, you have to adjust your ATR and you have to adjust your speed period. If you just do those two things without adjusting anything else and leaving your stochastic at 20, you're going to find an optimal setting that you want to run your strategy with. Just by playing with those two settings and finding on what time frame you want to use if you're a scalper, position trader, what have you. However, if you go back and you put this into uh, the, the, a, setting, a larger set, a larger period, which is 10, you can't go higher than 15 on a speed period, by the way. Um, if you go that, if you go this, and if you go back to, let's say, you can go 32, 33, or even higher, lower if you want, but you can see the difference now. So instead of just playing with the strategy and trying to optimize the strategy, you're like, well, I mean, it, it hits you right in the face. I mean, you can clearly see whatever market you're trading, you can pretty much see what time frame, what period, speed period works well with it, and what ATR works well with that time frame. So whether you use tick charts, whether you use Rinko's, if you're using a Rinko, I educate 5 sim Rinko with at least a 32 or 33 ATR. All right, if you do a 25, you're going to pull your hair out trying to find trade setup, and we don't want to do that. You will let this thing run smooth and do its thing. Let's go over. Let's go over this. Now go over a filter. How you can look for these manually. I told Gerald that I want to keep these short. So, but um, if you look, if you go further down here, uh, long net, short net. These, these are. If you go all the way over to the right, scroll to the right. You can put alert two. Just change it to two. Change it to three. Just type in three. It gives you different beeps. If you don't like that loud, obnoxious sound that the alert one gives, you can change it to I believe three is a beep. You can know, change it to two. You can change this. What this does when these retracement arrows come up and you have your speakers on, an audible alert comes up. All right. What I'm doing with the uh, what I got a lot of emails about this with traders. They want the WPTs to show an alert. When the WPTs start firing against overall ATR trend, because it is the most accurate trade in the whole system, and so it's a highest, lowest risk, highest probability trade, they want to have A, either a toggle switch that shows the retracement trades, a different sound, but most importantly, they want the WPT. So on the update, 
um, I will be changing that to a WPT alert. In other words, if I'm downtrending here in an ATR, as soon as that first speed bar against ATR right here prints, it's firing me, a, a, it's firing a sound to let you know a trade setup is coming up instead of just these retracement trades because these are high probability setups when you are going with the ATR. So that's something I am working on as far as that goes. But that's what that is. That's a sound bar. And that's for retracement trades. If you guys did not know how to do that, that is what this uh, long alert and short alert means. All right, add trades. You really don't need, we'll go over this in the next session because I'm, I'm going to go over re, how to look at retracement trades and add retracement trades. Um, if you don't do this the right way on clicking on and off of these things, and if, they're not, if they don't match up, it won't work. So I need to do a whole video on how to do retracement trades in the next next week, next Thursday. We're, we're not talking about WPs next week. We're strictly talking about retracement trading. So um, next week on the next video, I'm going to be going over these retracements. Also, I'm going to go over the second ATR. The second ATR, what it basically does, and this is a this will be with the retracement trades I'll do in the video next week, uh, but this will show us uh, how you can look for continuation trades. But I want to go over the WPT trade because it's the most effective tonight. And then next week's and next videos, we'll cover the bottom half of this indicator. All right, next Thursday, we'll call, cover the bottom half. Let's go over what I like to see when we see these WPTs. So in the WPTs, when they start, when they form and they come up against the ATR, uh, if you don't know what a doji is, you can go in here under Ninja Trader and you can just add it, candlestick pattern, and it's right there, add it, hit doji, you're good to go. What I found on the WPTs is this. The ones that don't work blow right through the ATR. The ones that are successful have a lower close or a higher close, what's called a lower close doji or a higher close doji than the, um, than the speed bar. So when we're moving down, and it, uh, if you trade the NASDAQ, you get tons of trades. I mean, there were so many trades, it's crazy. But in volatile markets, these fire up a lot. But if you come down, you're coming down, we're looking for a trade set up, no speed bars, no, no green speed bars. We're looking for a green speed bar. Here they fire up. Once a green speed bar fires, what we're going to do is we're going to look for a doji. A doji, it will color it. Uh, gray for you if you put it in as an indicator it's a free indicator ninja it will color it gray for you so you look for a doge what you're looking for is that for these WPTs the ones that fail typically if they go two closes above the ATR without getting pulled in with this type of filter which I'll show you then you just want to stay away from it but what happens is is that if you get if the doji forms and that's the highest print of the speed bar, meaning that's the highest bar after the speed bar, which it is, it's the highest high, then a close below that low is your trigger. This is your trigger point for that confirmation that that is going to work. So that's your confirmation that we're looking for it to work. Now, there's two ways to do it. On a lot of a lot of times when you start watch, especially on the three and I mean on the five sim, it happens quite a bit. Is that close of the doji will typically be the high of that bar, and this happens a lot. Just watch it. When that pull in, there's your trigger. There's your trigger when it closes below the low of that doji. There's your trigger point to go short. It typically retraces. This high of this bar is typically the exact same close of that doji. So the high of this bar is 81 and 3 quarters. The close of this doji right there close is 81 and 3 quarters. When you get good at this and you start watching this, you can put a limit order in. If you get an 8, if, instead of going at selling the bid right here because you're taking a little bit of risk on what you get because your stop is going to be the high of that doji. So what you can do is you can put a limit order in a quarter below or a tick below the open of this doji. Now, you're not going to catch all trades like this, but it works quite well. And your stop would be two ticks above the swing of high of that doji. So the high of this doji would have been 
8350 is a high there no high is yeah 8350 and the close what was that yeah 81 three quarters so that's on a five Simrenko. so another way you can do it is you can actually have a smaller stop so let's say the low the you have to make sure that when you're qualifying these these right here jerry i'm almost done here bud um when you're qualifying these WPTs, the doji has to be the high of the print. High, it has to be a high of the move. Okay, if that if this next bar is a high of the move, you can't use the low of that. Yeah, I mean you can't use this doji, which I'll show you in a second. So that is going to be your trigger bar. It likes to retrace there, and you're good to go. Now, if you use that as your entry. As, as far as this is your entry, you always want to go, here's one, one, two bars back. There's your swing high for your stop. So let's take another look at another one, and I'll show you what I'm talking about. So here is one. Here's a uh, speed into the ATR. Here's speed, 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 speed. Here's my doji. I'm allowed to close one candle outside the ATR. That's fine, not two, or it cancels my trade setup. If it closes two guys and gals, just you can let it go. But what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to look for a low of the doge. There's a low of the doge. My trigger is right here. That's a close. That's your close. Now, what happens is, is that if you see that it never got back to the open of the or close of the doji. So if you want to, if you do not want to miss a lot of trades, or if you're doing, if this is if you're doing limit orders in, it typically comes up to the low of the doge, and then you can place your limit order that way. If you just want to do, make it simple, and, and do low close dojis, and put your, st your stop has to be above the swing high. It's got to be above here. That's where your stop has to be. Stop has to be here. There's your stop. There's your pull in. If you're going to play off of that pull-in, now the smaller time frame that you do this with, then obviously the more the less risk you're going to take on those trade setups. So, but if you look here also, I come up and there it is. I never close above my ATR. There's my Doge. You're looking for a low close Doji. Right, there it is. There's your trigger bar right here. There's your trigger bar. Look how the limit order hit at the low of this, not at the open, at the low. So if you want to do a limit above at the low of that doji, typically it gets hit as far as a limit order on the backfill. What happens is once you get a trigger bar on the 5 sem, typically you get a retracement. And so what you can do when you're doing these setups, and you're doing these, the low, the doji still is a lot better fill than a fill after the trigger bar. You can put a limit order in at the low, the doji. Typically, you'll get hit on it, and then you can adjust your stop to make it a smaller stop. But that's a good way to do it. Now, let's say a doji doesn't come up. because so, so these are three low close doji fills. You're getting your close below it. It's got to be the highest bar, though, right here. It's got to be the highest bar. That's your highest bar. That's the low of it. There's your close below it. This one over here. The doji is the highest bar. You're allowed to one close outside of it. There's your close below it. There's a doji. That's the highest bar. There's your close below it. That triggers the market to get moving. Now, over here, you don't get a doji, but you come up to the ATR. If that happens, you got to take the highest high of the bar without closing too close above the ATR. So that's this candle right here. I mean, the open high low close bar. There's your trigger. There's your trigger. Your limit order can be at the low of this bar or the close of this bar open, which you've got to fill there too. So you get filled a lot at the open, open and close on I mean, a close of the of, of the trigger bar, which a doji, the open and close are equal. But I'm, what I'm saying is, is you would have got filled here 
it's uh, you on a retracement because the trigger bar already hit so you're already filled at a retracement which that's what happens on the five cent quite a bit so you're filled at put a limit order at 69 a quarter instead of getting filled at the low of this bar which is 67 and three quarters I mean it's a big difference so you can play with that but that's what I want you to work on until next week is qualifying your setups when they come into a WPT.